Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. It's good to see everybody here this evening. This is Mommy Income Live, and we are talking to you tonight with our special guest, Barbara. But before that, I'm Kristen Ostrander, and I'm Amy Fairman. It's so good to see you guys. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're ready to learn how to source in different ways and different strategies. But please welcome our special guest, Barbara Dregs. I say your name wrong all the time. I'm going to let her say her own name. <laughs> yes, I am here. All right. <laughs> you got to talk so we can see you. That's Sorry, awesome. I'm, like, I'm talking, I'm talking. This is my taxidermy chicken that I got at an auction a few months ago. Woohoo, how cool is he, right? I just wanted to say hello to everybody and tell you the funky stuff you can get at auctions. Funky chick can get it. Okay, I did not plan that. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Amy. How are you? So good to see you. Amy's Thanks. hanging out in the background. So if anybody has, if has, there's links or anything like that, we need to post and share. Uh, she's going to be hanging out there and then for the PowerPoint towards the end. So um, welcome to the show. It's so good to see you again. It's been a while. Um, and we are just ready to talk to you about all your auction expertise. It just interests me because I've never been to an auction, but I've always been wanting to go. So I'm going to learn all your secrets and then I'm going to go and <laughs> try an auction for myself. So um, how did you tell us how you got into auctions? You know, uh, I don't remember the first live auction I went to. Um, I don't know how it got started. Isn't that funny how some of the most significant things in your life, you can't remember that moment it started? Um, I think I started with an online auction first and bought a few things and then went to a live auction. But I'll tell you, it, it must have been like six months going to a live auction where I didn't even get a bidder's card. I was so scared that if I like scratched my nose, I would spend money accidentally. It's really not how that works at all. Um, the auctioneers are awesome at figuring out who's bidding and who's not bidding. But in the beginning, I didn't know that. So I didn't even get a bidder card because I was afraid that you know, I couldn't understand what they were saying. They were talking so fast. They were throwing numbers out. I could never figure out what the bid was. And I was always afraid that I was going to spend a whole lot more on something than you know what, uh, what I should. So um, I guess it was about four years ago I went to my first live auction, and uh, mm -hmm. I just kept going. I was hooked after I got into it. I was just totally hooked, and I've been going ever since. Okay, so first, when you talk about auctions, can you tell us a little bit about all the different types of auctions, and then we'll get into maybe how you use those to source and then sell product on different platforms. Sure. Well, when I started going to auctions, uh, I wasn't selling on Amazon. It wasn't even on my radar, and um, it's... I would have to say that going to an auction was what eventually in a circuitous route got me onto Amazon. So there, there are different kinds of auctions. First, there's an online only auction where you don't really go and physically see the goods. You bid for it online based on the pictures and the description, uh, and then they mail it to you or you pick it up. There are live auctions where it's only live, you have to physically go there, you can preview the items, you can you know, check your, scan them on your app, check eBay, Amazon, etc. Um, and then you bid live. And there are what I call hybrid auctions, which is both online and live, which means that you could be sitting in front of your computer, Kristen, bidding against me and an auction that I'm standing at live. And there are some pros and cons to um, all of those different models. Then regardless of the delivery mechanism of the auction, there are different types of auctions. There are, of course, everybody's seen storage, the storage auction television show, right? By the way, that's only a little bit real. <laughs> Some of that stuff goes on, but a lot of that is very scripted. Um, but there are storage auctions. There are liquidation auctions. There are bankruptcy auctions. There are e-commerce auctions. This one's fairly new. So when you folks, uh, any of you sell it on Amazon, twice a year we have the long-term storage fee thing, and a lot of people bring their, get their inventory back, or if you've got dead inventory that's not selling, you need to bring it back. A lot of folks are now sending them into auction houses. All that inventory is ending up in an auction house. So you can, A, either score some great products for really inexpensive at the, the auctions that you can then send back on Amazon, or you can accidentally buy store returns and damaged items that are Amazon returns that you don't know that they're not good to send into Amazon. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, so those yeah. seems like that seems like more uh, for the platform seller that might be selling at local flea markets or have yeah. you know places like they do eBay and they're not worried about Amazon stuff. So that's a good place to get inventory for other platforms other than Amazon. 
Oh, I totally believe in cross-platform selling. I sell on Craigslist, OfferUp. I have my own Facebook groups locally that are like yard sale groups. I know you do some stuff on local Facebook groups too, or have in the past. Uh, I very do. Powerful, very powerful. In fact, um, fast forward a little bit, I source mostly wholesale now, wholesale and liquidation for my Amazon FBA business. And I always keep back 20, about 20% 20 of the inventory that I purchase to send in FBA to sell locally. Yeah, that's a great, you know, that's, there's always a great strategy. I know even right now the times are, uh, times are a little bit rocky in the Amazon business. A lot of people are freaking out about different brands that are being restricted and things like that. And this is just a way to secure your business. It's just another sourcing strategy that you, that you can add to your repertoire to be able to sell locally, Craigslist, things like that. As a matter of fact, right now I'm prepping for a local sale that's going on this weekend that I'm getting rid of things that I can't sell on Amazon either due to hazmat or just due to restrictions or the box got a little bit damaged but it still has value and I don't have to take the time to individually take care of it on eBay, which I still do and I still hire out. But, you know, it's a good strategy to do, you know, why leave profit on the table? So when you talk about auctions, um, you know, walk us through, for example, everybody I bet is curious about live auctions. So why don't you walk us through your typical live auction? You go to an auction house, you walk in, what, what seems to be the process? Uh, well, the first thing that happens is, um, and, and remind me, I want to go back and finish the loop and tell you, uh, I'm making a note here, tell you exactly how I transitioned into selling on Amazon because of a contact I made in an auction house. Um, okay, so at a live auction, you walk in and there's stuff everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's an antique auction or, um, and usually there are different rings. So in one particular auction on a Wednesday night here, there are three rings. One is collectibles and jewelry, where there'll be glass display cases, and you can go in and, and look at the jewelry with one of the auction people there, you know, helping you. Another would be uh, the furniture ring, which is a little bit higher end furniture, and then everything else. So it could be furniture, uh, chickens, the uh, taxidermy chickens I got at that particular auction, in fact, um, and everything. It could be, um, in fact, I was kind of scoping out this particular auction today online, and they have in the back of one of their pictures pallets of new goods shrink wrapped in original boxes. I can't tell what they are, but you better believe I'm going there tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon to scope out exactly what those are with the barcode still on the cases. So you never know what you're going to find. Uh, in this particular auction, I also got um, urology books, which I don't know if any of you guys know what urology is, but it's a study uh, or it's um, uh, a watch and clock fixing. I got cases and cases of these. I flipped into Amazon, made a ton of money on them. Um, here's another something I got at an auction. I got a couple of pallets of these guys. It's an executive golf putter set with an extendable golf putter and a little ball and a little hole. And um, that same auction on Wednesday, I got a bunch of Dickies stuff. So I got Dickies work shirts. I got Dickies overall brand new in the package with the skew on it. Um, the filters, I'll tell you all about the filter story a little bit later, but I got, um, I paid $400 for all of the cases that I got, and I'll tell you what I profited on Amazon. I'm almost all done with these. I've got four cases left, and I had probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 cases. Um, so anyway, live auction. You walk in, and there are different rings. You find the office, you go straight there, and you hand over your driver's license, because they want to make sure that you're legal. And you hand over usually $100 to hold a bidder's number. Okay, that gives you the, um, that allows you to bid. So, you know, what used to happen way back when is people would walk in, bid on things, and walk out, right? They, they had no intention of buying. They would just do that to run the bid up. So that's how they, they solved that is you have to give them, you know, between $50 and $200, normally about $100, bucks, um, to get the bidder number. And at the end, when you're done with the auction, you don't have to wait till it's done. When you're done there, you could just stay half an hour and leave. You go back to the window, give them your card, and they give you that 100 bucks back if you didn't buy anything, or they apply it to your bill if you did buy something. And then you that's, preview. Always that's preview. That's a great tip. Now, do some, okay, when you're talking previews, do they usually have previews online, or is it just you have to come and see what they have? Sometimes. If it's, if it's an, um, sometimes. You know, there are a couple of auction houses that they're just not high tech at all, especially the, the country ones, and they're awesome. They might have a website. Um, with a few pictures, like a big picture of, of everything, but not individual. So it depends on the auction house. Also, you can't trust pictures. 
or a lot of times they'll just put, you know, chest of drawers. But they won't say it's a lane, what the uh, dimensions are, uh, that it's from 1820, none of that. They just put chest of drawers. So buyer beware when you're looking, when you're buying off of photographs, be careful. That's a great tip. Now, when, when you come into an auction, like you said, when you're doing a preview, generally what happens at a preview? Can you touch? Can you look? Can you pick up? Oh, yeah. You can pick up. It's just like you were going into a store to buy something. Um, so you can pick it up. You can scan it. Here's what you're not allowed to do. If you're looking at box lots where maybe there's five things in a box, you can't be moving things from one box to another. That's, uh, they, they, that's the equivalent of stealing in auction world. Uh, but yeah, just put it back where you found it and be respectful because they have things laid out in a certain way. Um, and some people will try to, and these are the things that will get you banned from that auction house. So sometimes these auctions go pretty late into the night, especially this Wednesday night one. And there's a, a route that the auction takes through the whole warehouse. Some people will take something that's going to come up at the very end of the auction and move it to, to a pile in the front of the auction. That'll get you booted as well. So just be respectful and um, scan everything. Look at uh, look at expiration dates if it's food. Uh, make sure you're looking for brand restrictions, hazmat restrictions, restrictions for category if you're not allowed to um, sell something. And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just do your research before before you uh, bid on anything. That's a great tip. So, uh, you know, when it comes to live auctions, then, you know, you get your bid, you start bidding on something, you know, let's talk about um, bidding for just a moment, because I know this is what scares me. I'm, I want to go to my first auction and after talking to you, I know I'm going to try it and you can hold me accountable to that. I'm going to find one locally and just go and see and check it out. But I'm always afraid of that emotional bidding. You know, when I see something I'm like married to, all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm not going to let this guy outbid me. I'm going to have to win this and I'll like lose money. And and, you know, I'll kind of get caught up. So, you know, have you seen that happen? Have you done that? What's your story with that? Uh, duh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's, you know, a whole psychology behind it, too. Um, it depends who's in the room. It, um, I, I'll go into to a new auction. where if Okay, so if I go into an auction and they all know me, they know my bidding style, I know who I can – intimidate the backing down. I know who I can outbid. Um, but if I go into a new room, into a new auction, let's say I come visit you and we go to that auction together, these folks don't know me and they'll, they, they eat newbies alive because they want to see how far they can push you and they don't want your competition. So they're going to make, they're going to do things so that you'll never come back again. So I establish superiority the minute I walk into that, that auction ring. So I might bid on something buy something that I don't necessarily want, but you know, maybe I want it for myself, but I can't make money on it. Um, but I'll establish my authority on that first bid, which means, um, so there are some people who bid by doing this and nobody's going to see you that you're not going to be taken seriously. You have to, this might hurt your ears a little bit, but you, you have to say, Hey, and make yourself known to the auctioneer get the attention of the auctioners, the other the people you're bidding against. So you're establishing confidence and authority when you walk into that auction house. So you're taken seriously as a player as opposed to somebody who's just they're not really knowing what they're doing. And I, I guess that goes with anything, right? Anything that you approach. You go in with professionalism um, and authority and you give yourself the edge. That's my opinion. Now, how about budget and time? And also, you know, Amy's asking here, auctions of male-dominated world still? Yeah, and, and you know, there, I, I, he, I hesitate to make globalizations, but here's a generalization that has caveats. So a lot of the women are there who own shops. So they'll buy a certain type of thing for their shop, whether they have an antique shop or shabby chic or collectibles, they have a shop. Um, and that's most of the women that are there have shops. Uh, some of them have an eBay store or an Etsy store. And then a lot of the guys there, they also have shops and they're very aggressive when they bid. They have furniture stores usually. And then the other set of guys there are eBay sellers and they're also very aggressive. And you'll know them because they're carrying around iPads and cell phones and they're looking up everything. Here's what you don't have at auction so much. Amazon buyers. So I don't tell people I sell on Amazon at auctions because the first question you get is, oh, really? I can do that? How do I do that? <laughs> so you want to make your own competition at auctions. So when people say- It's a good say, way to get customers. 
Sort of. It's a good way to create competition, though. Like those Dickies, these guys didn't know what to do with them, and that's why I got them for so cheap, because uh, they didn't know that they could just scan it and throw it into Amazon. So that okay, let me ask you real quick with that yeah. question because they, this that question intimidates a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what to say if they're asked outright. Um, if people approach them and ask them, so what would be your generalized answer to where you're not lying to people, but you're just kind of keeping it quiet so that you don't create that kind of um, competition for yourself? Great question. It's not necessarily how you what you say; it's how you say it. So what I say. Oh, you know, I sell online, Craigslist. So real casual, pass it off. There's no lying involved. I sell online, but I don't need to tell them where I sell online. And I do sell on Craigslist occasionally, right? Yeah. So, oh, you know, I sell online and then I change the subject and I do it with a smile in a very casual, friendly way. Um, Cause you don't want to make enemies because some of these guys will trounce you on your bids. They'll just bid you up to bid you up because they don't like you. Yeah, that's true. So, well, yeah, that's a good tip. You know, I think a lot of people in general, people have had questions like that at retail stores when they're doing retail arbitrage. There's a lot of people that don't like that question because they're afraid to answer. They're afraid to actually tell people. And, you know, it's a very tough question because some people, like you said, they don't want people to know their business and it, it creates questions. You know, at an auction, it might not because a lot of people are resellers. Yeah. But even at a retail arbitrage store when you're stocking your cart full of, 10, 15, 20 of the same item and people are like, wow, do you run an orphanage with all these toys or whatever? You know, it's kind of awkward because it's about the only time someone really gets into your business and asks you personal really questions. You don't really get that at auctions because everybody's a reseller. Right. So there's no, gosh, are you a teacher? What do you know? It's not like that. It's everybody's reselling it somewhere. Um, they, they might ask you, do you have a store somewhere? No, 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 I sell online. And then I switch the conversation back on them. So do you have a store? Is that right? What kind of stuff do you like to buy? Yeah, I saw you bidding on that Queen Anne chest over there. Do you do a lot in furniture? So I just take control of the conversation in a non-threatening way. That's a great tip. Great for that. Okay, so let's talk online auctions for a minute because I think that that maybe has a little bit more risk involved. Um, tell us your experience on some online auctions. You know, I don't know if the risk is more. It's just a little different. So a lot of online auctions... Um, so <clears throat> there are auction houses here locally in Phoenix, Arizona, where they have, it's an online only, but you can go to their facility and preview. So you can go there and look at the stuff and then um, go back online and do some more research. So online auction, I think, gives you more lead time to do research on Amazon to see what it's selling for, on eBay to see what it's going for, to see the history of sales for a particular item or brand. That's a great tip. Now, what about, so if it doesn't though, if they don't offer a uh, preview at their facility, um, what do you suggest to take precautions on a certain types of things or, or maybe is there a way to ask questions? If somebody is brand new to online auctions, what, what are your top few tips on making smart purchases? Okay, so great question. Thanks for putting my feet to the fire. I love it. Um, Let's say you've got an online auction that's got 100 items, and everybody is on the electronics and the, um, you know, the headphones, and there's a lot of, lot of play on the, the lots, which is an item um, that's being sold in that auction is called a lot, L-O-T. So there are some really popular lots with a lot of people competing on it. Stay away from those. Go for the non-sexy stuff. So a few months ago, there was a local auction and uh, it was palleted stuff, and there's a lot of cool stuff there, and office supplies. So office supplies are not sexy. And it was a, an office that had gone out of business, and every, everybody was bidding on the desks and bidding on the computers, and everyone else, nobody was, they were just ignoring these brand-new boxes of Sharpies and Bic pens, cases and cases and cases, flip chart paper. I've got so much flip chart paper. It's brand-new in the, in the packages, 3M and Avery flip chart paper. I bought it all for next to nothing because my risk was so little. I, I did some research, okay? I did look up. I, I did, um, type, you know, I had to type in because there was no UPC that I could get to. They were all in boxes. But I found the products. I knew I could make some money on them. But because there was very little competition because everybody was going after the sexy stuff, it hedged my bet so I could get the stuff for really cheap. So if for some reason I couldn't sell it on Amazon, I could have a yard sale. 
So hedge your bets. Don't go after the sexy stuff. Go after the stuff everybody else is ignoring. And do your research. And I think that's another great tip in general when you're selling. Um, Yeah, people have a niche and people have things like that. But honestly, you guys, especially if you're Amazon FBA sellers, it it doesn't matter if it's sexy. It doesn't matter if you like it. It doesn't matter if it's a top number one seller. Sell what sells. Sell what you can make a profit on. I don't care if it's a big pen or an adult diaper or a set of headphones. If I can make a good ROI on it, I'm in. So that's a great tip there. So Barbara says not to look for all the stuff with all the competition, but maybe look at what things people are not paying attention to. So that is a great tip. Okay. So we've talked live auctions, online auctions. Let's get to the hybrid because I think that's interesting. Um, what have you done a hybrid yourself? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like and is it easier or more difficult and how does it work? Okay, so when there's a hybrid auction, and again, a hybrid auction is where it's a live auction with an online element. What stinks is that um, the bids are going to be higher because all the people who don't want to leave their computer and go physically, you know, go to a, a live auction, um, you're going to be competing against a lot more people than just the people in the room. Also, some of these auctions, if you're doing collectibles, they're all over this, the country. So you have a lot more competition. Um, the way to win a bid in a hybrid auction for a reasonable amount is to go to the auction, physically go to the auction, because there's, there are a couple things that happens. One, you have technology involved, so there could be a lag time, and when somebody hits the enter key to place their bid, it might the, the auctioneer might hit the gavel and say sold to Barbara for $99 because the, the electrons didn't get from when they hit the enter key to their auction system in time. So you can do some sniping, I call it sniping, at the last minute and edge out the online buyers. So hybrid auctions, I'd say if you get the chance to go to the live version of it, go because you'll win more items. And you get to preview the items too, which is so important. Okay, tell us why that's so important. Well, like I said, the, you know, sometimes they'll just put a picture up and a one word description um, or they'll photograph um, Let's say, okay, so some of these guys, I know a guy who buys pallets and pallets of Amazon returns, Home Depot, Walmart, Finger Hut, all these returns, and puts them through a particular, there's two particular auctions that I know of, he puts them through. And what you don't, when, you, when they do a picture online, it looks brand spanking new, beautiful. What you don't know is that that is a return. Now, if that's like an air purifier and the box looks perfect, it could be somebody took it out, it was broken, put it back in the perfect box. Now you're bidding on that online because you didn't go and plug it in. And sadly, I've made that mistake back when I was beginning. I bought stuff that I didn't test or I didn't see it in person and I found it was all banged up. It was just in a pretty box. You have to preview to hedge your bets. Here's a question for the Amazon type sellers. I know a lot of our listeners here are Amazon sellers. Now, when they're talking live auctions and someone has a pallet, um, do they have to disclose that they're returned merchandise? No. So it can just be pallet lot number 127 and you have to look through it yep. and test it and touch the boxes. and. Yep. Yep. It's your responsibility is buyer beware. Most stuff at auctions is as is, where is. So once it says sold, it's yours. It's, it doesn't matter what it is, it's yours. Okay, and what is it usually when it comes to shipping and taking your items out, what's the average time? Do you have to take it as soon as you leave or can you arrange to pick it up a couple days later? How does that usually work? Depends on the auction house. Most auction house wants the stuff out within 48 hours max because they have to set the floor for the next auction. So I'd say be prepared to get it out within 24 hours. I, I don't like to make a second trip back if I don't have to. So I go usually with an empty minivan, minivan with no seats in it. So when I buy, did you see that giant Toys R Us sign I bought? The I R? Did. <laughs> but thank God my minivan was empty. <laughs> right. That's you know, probably way bigger than it looks. I, it's big. It's, it's like it comes up to me. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty cool. It's going, yeah. in my, it's going on the wall in my garage. That's fun. So you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, for sure. And hey, for the right price, you know, it depends on what, you know, you never know what people want. I mean, um, it just, it, 
it's to each his own. And I think, you know, if you have a mixed platform, then you have a mixed way of making money. Like you can buy a lot of stuff. Like if you're going just for Amazon FBA, I feel like you better do all your homework because you know, there's so many more rules, but if you're buying for eBay or Craigslist or even local yard sales or flea markets, it's a great place to find inventory. That's less than perfect. You need perfect inventory for Amazon. Let's, I mean, yes, there's used things and we're not, you know, I'm not saying that there isn't, you can't sell used on Amazon. There are lots of things you can, but for the most part, your Amazon inventories wants to be brand spanking new in the box, not messed up, not dinged up. So, but don't leave money on the table. If you're just looking for Amazon stuff, you know, make sure you're selling cross platform because there's so much profit to be made. If you're going to go and take the time to go to an auction and look around and look at things, you know, just try it, try to buy something. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that completely. I truly love having multiple selling platforms to hedge my bets. Um, so if one platform slows down, I can switch focus to another platform. When I go to an auction, I have a goal to uh, either spend, uh, have a certain, like if I'm there for three hours, then my net profit of that three hours needs to be $500. So whatever I need to invest in on whatever platform I'm going to sell it, if I'm investing three hours of my time, it's $500 net profit. So I just bought some trivets and some antique irons on Saturday because there was nothing new there except for some M&M stuff, um, like M&M dispensers. And I got two of those, but they went way too high, uh, like an M&M bank. And it was kind of cute and a clock. So I got a couple, but I won't make a ton of money on it. But since I was there, um, I bought other stuff because I was there, right? And I knew I could flip it fast. I bought just box bankers boxes of wine corks wine corks that's it wine corks but the ladies locally they're into their christmas projects right now i put them up on my facebook page in craigslist and just bundle you know 50 of them for five bucks done gone easy 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 so don't leave money on the table as you said and another thing is we're heading into q4 and i will do everything and anything i need to do right now to keep my capital flowing Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's turn and burn. Tis the season. You know, like you said, there are things like that. I mean, we were, we're selling Thanksgiving already. Why? Because people yeah. are buying it. <laughs> and yeah. so there's never too early to start. There's never too early to start putting things on eBay. I mean, we bought a ton of, of there was a liquidation. It wasn't even a liquidation total sale. They were 75% off and I have wholesalers of a supply, local supply company. It's kind of like it was a, it was a, um, mom and pop kind of owned local party supply and they had all kinds of stuff. It was just kind of that anyway, they had, but they had a ton of Halloween costumes, 70% off and it was July. And so a lot of people are going in there and they're getting party supplies and things like that. And I'm like, Oh, I'm getting all this Halloween stuff. Adult Halloween costumes are expensive, 70 to a hundred dollars each and 75% off plus an additional 10. If you bought over a thousand dollars, I said, easy, I'm going to buy. And, and guess what? I sent them all in right away and I am almost out and it's not even October. I am out okay. of Halloween costumes, you know, because it's just never too early. So, you know, when you're thinking about these things and platforms, you know, the local ones are going to get faster, easier for those of you who go to mom to mom sales or local Facebook groups. Now is the time to start selling those big giant kitchens and those big, huge little tykes toys and things like that. People are looking to find those before it starts to, well, in this area starts to get colder out and people start closing their doors on yard sales and things like that. So um, get them while you can before it starts to get colder out. Well, here on the West Coast, we're ramping up for yard sale season. It's still like 101, but in another three or four weeks, I'm going to do my mega um, yard sale beginning October, first weekend in October. All my Amazon stuff, everything, everything's coming out. Uh, it's just mega uh, because it's going to be, you know, 85 degrees here. So it depends on the part of town you're in. But you said something that um, sparked an idea for me, and I, you said that you've got a lot of folks who, who follow you, and um, you're, you're really good at teaching people who uh, just don't know anything about selling online, who've never sold online. Um, don't let it, it, you know what, don't, don't let, don't be intimidated by online selling. Let's say you're not real technical savvy. You don't have to be. Um, here's what you, here's how you start. Go to your local Facebook groups and join, you know, a search in Facebook for whatever city you're in, a uh, swap or flea market group. And you join these groups, right? 
and watch what sells. And that's how you find out what to source locally at an auction or on Craigslist or OfferUp or whatever. So that's how I started. I saw that wrought iron crosses. Somebody would post a wrought iron cross for 10 bucks, and suddenly there's all these people saying, oh, I want it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's like 20 people and one cross. So I went online, and I went to Google, and I put wrought iron cross wholesale, and I found some suppliers, and I brought some samples in, put them on the Facebook group. I want, I want, I want, I want. And before I knew it, I had a, lot of, a line of wrought iron crosses. So look on these, use these Facebook groups to see what people want. Toys. You were right. Toys. Totally. Um, dollhouses, outdoor toys in the West Coast. So do some competitive research on your Facebook group. So you know when you go to an auction and you see something, you're like, oh, I know that's going to sell because I saw a bunch of people buying them over on that Facebook group. Absolutely. You can never underestimate um, the power of research and local. I have said this a million times. I'll say it again and I'll say it again. You are where you are. No one else can be. Yeah, you're going to have some local competition, sure, but you are where you are and you know what you know. So take advantage of your local area. You can source what you can source. There's someone around here that's not on your Facebook group and you can dominate that. Just like I, that was brilliant of what Barbara said about looking at what's selling locally and then sourcing that even wholesale. Like there's nothing wrong with that. If someone says, you know, for our Facebook group, our local one is, you know, our, we say interested. Someone has to say interested to claim their idea. Item, you know, and if it's, there's a, we have a friend that just opened a local shop that everything is homemade, handmade, it's called Made in Michigan, Made in Mish, and it's right up the street. And now he's selling out of things like crazy because he was looking at these Facebook groups of these ladies just hand painting these little pretty signs on pallets and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, this stuff's selling. I'm going to put that in my store and it just flies off the shelf. So looking at those things and seeing if you can source it wholesale, because then you're not trying to find some vintage one. And I know a lady that does it with furniture. She does it with furniture. She sees what people want and are buying. She buys them yep. at, you know, garage sales, whatever, repaints them shabby chic and makes a killing. Auctions. You buy that. Okay, so I started with furniture. When I started going to auctions, that's what I was buying. I had storage sheds full of furniture. Um, French provincial stuff. It's hot. Mid-century modern. It's hot, depending on what par part of the country you're in. But here in Phoenix, I could buy anything that looks French provincial and turn around and flip it within... 40, 48 to 72 hours before I leave that auction, before I even pay for that item, I've taken a picture and posted it on Facebook groups and Craigslist. And a lot of times I have it sold before I even pay for it when I leave the auction. Absolutely. So flip anything. It doesn't have to be Amazon stuff. Find out what's selling. At auctions, you can get the stuff for a really good price um, and just flip it and get your capital up so that when you're ready to do Amazon, if that's what you want to do, then you've built your capital up locally. Absolutely. And don't just, don't head yourself in. You know, if you haven't tried eBay, if you haven't tried Craigslist, if all of these things worry you, um, give it a try. We did a show not too long ago about eBay and how you can get started and do things like that. And I know that a lot of people since then have tried eBay and have fallen in love and realized, wow, there's another source of income for me that I've tried Amazon and I started there. Or, you know, if you haven't tried Amazon, you know, we have resources for that too, just because, um, you know, you want to diversify yourself as much as you can because you never know what's going to happen. And if you're a flipper, you're a flipper. Um, if you are um, someone who is an online seller or an entrepreneur, you are at heart. So don't head yourself in by one or two different platforms. Try something else. That's like, that's, that's what I'm doing here. When I'm done with the show, I'm prepping for this local sale that I'm, that I'm involved in, that I'm going to get rid of all my what we call Amazon duds, and they're hardly duds. They're either restrict items that have been restricted that are not catching very much money on eBay for whatever reason, or they're just the boxes dinged up just a little bit, and I'll take what I can get because I want that capital now so that I can pour it into Q4. Yep, I agree. It's the velocity of money. Velocity of money. So as we're talking about um, getting rid of your Amazon duds, which is I know you're calling them duds, but they're like totally um, worthwhile products to somebody who's willing to pay money for it. Here's another thing you can do. I mentioned earlier is uh, you take all of your duds and you throw it in an auction house. And you're going to pay between 25 and 40%, depending on the auction house. So you need to do some research. Um, so whatever doesn't sell after your sale, you might consider about dropping it off in an auction house and at least get a check for something in the next week or so. So uh, to piggyback on that, let's say you go to an auction and there's a pallet of stuff 
And there's only like five or six boxes on the palette that you, you know you can make money on, you know you can sell. Don't walk by that palette because everybody else is going to walk by that palette because they're thinking, oh, I don't need all that stuff. What you do with that after you buy it for really cheap is you cherry pick. So you pick the things off that you know you can put into Amazon, Craigslist, Facebook, whatever. You cherry pick the stuff off for eBay, and then you repalletize or you, you put smaller lots together and drop them off in an auction house. You recycle the stuff you don't want back into an auction house. And a lot of times the stuff that you, um, that you recycle back pays for everything on the pallet. So you basically get the stuff you cherry picked for free. That's a great idea. Now, talk to us a little bit about selling items at an auction house. So when you say grab and cherry pick and drop it back off, like what, what's involved in selling some of your stuff? Like if I wanted to take the rest of this on Saturday, whatever doesn't sell, I have to come back and pick up and I'm going to have a van full of stuff that I could either try and donate or if it still has some, some profit in it, you know, what would I do with that? Well, the first thing you do is you do a little research on the different auction houses locally to you. And each auction house is going to be uh, a little bit better at different things. So one auction house might be better, get better prices at furniture. Another one, nobody pays for anything for furniture there, so you get no money for it. Another auction house might do really well with jewelry and collectibles. And then uh, a different one that maybe doesn't have an online element doesn't get a lot of money. So you want to do a little reconnaissance on the auction houses before you drop something off. And then um, you remember what I said about hybrid auctions that – it's tougher as a buyer at a hybrid auction because there are so many buy Well, as you're a consigner at these hybrid auctions, the prices are higher. So look for one that's got the online component and as well as the live component because you'll get more money. And how do you, you know, someone's asking, how, how do you learn that? So how do you know which auction house is better at one? Do you call and ask or do you just look at their websites or how do you know which ones are better at what? Okay, so you want to start on their website, um, and a lot of them will post their past auctions. Uh, so you want to look at what they're getting for, for different items, but it's not going to be consistent because the nature of an auction is you never know what something's going to sell for, and it could either be, oh, man, I got nothing for that, or I can't believe somebody just paid that amount of money for that, and there is no consistency. You do not know. So here's the key. If I could tell you anything, here's the key emotionally detach from anything you send to an auction house. Sending something to an auction house is the last resort. You've tried everything else um, or you've decided that the value of this item is not great enough for me to put resources into taking pictures, putting it on eBay, shipping it to someone, waiting for it to sell, waiting, paying the commission. It's easier just to drive a bunch of that stuff to an auction house, drop it off, get a little bit of money out of it, so you can focus on things that are higher profit margin. Make sense? Absolutely. So I, do, I always, um, when I drop something off at an auction house, it no longer exists in my life. When they send me a reconciliation notice with a check, I never look at what anything sold for. Because That's a great it's gone, tip. It's gone. it's gone. Emotionally detached from it and gone. And if you can't emotionally detach from something, don't take it to an auction house because you're just going to make yourself feel bad. Right, for sure. Same thing about those people who list things for 99 cents on eBay and they get really upset that it sold for 99 cents. It's like, you listed it for that. You need to know that if you want at a higher price, you should start at a higher price. Okay, and what are the fees that are involved in that? As a seller, I know a lot of people here will probably be interested in, hey, I'm not married to this stuff. I could easily ditch it at an auction house. What kind of fees are involved in that? Well, you, you'd be called a consigner when you send something to an auction house, and every auction house has different fees, and some of them even have different levels of fees. So, for instance, if I wanted to consign a vehicle to one particular auction house over here, he charges me zero. He makes his money on the buyer's end. Um, another, another auction house, when I take industrial stuff, it's 20%, which is a really good, really good rate. Normally, it's between 25 and 40%. Okay, and there's not any, usually not any additional fees besides that. You just kind of drop it off. You get 40% drop it off, that's it. That's it. sale price. Yeah. And yep. is it typical that they send you a check like they, you said? They get 40%, not you. Oh. If I drop it off at the consignment house, they keep X amount of 35%, 40%, 25%. I get the rest. Okay. Now, is it typical, like you said, that they just mail you a check and a re reconciliation form, and that's pretty much how that's it goes? Uh, yes, and that brings me to something I probably should have said earlier, I forgot. Um, the way an auction house makes their money is on the consignment end, 
for the commission they earn by selling something for you. And on the buyer end, they get a buyer's premium. Anything you buy in an auction house, let's say you bid, you know, $10 for this glass and they have a $10 or 10% buyer's premium, you're paying $11 for this glass. Mm -hmm. okay? So uh, always find out when you register for the auction, either online or live, um, what their buyer's premium is. It's always posted really clearly next to the window. Another thing is on the online auctions, you will pay a higher premium, a higher bidder's premium, because they have to pay the, the platform, the auction platform, I think 3% plus credit card fees. So you're going to pay 3 to 6% more buyer's premium online, which, is, which gives you another leg up going to the live auction. Because let's say at the live auction, the bidder's premium is 13%. Online, it's 16%. Right out of the gate, if you're bidding on the same item against a guy who's online, you're getting a little bit cheaper than he is. So he might back off sooner because he's got to pay more. Second is a lot of auction houses will give you um, a discount if you pay cash when you're there. So an auction house, I might be able to get a 10% buyer's premium if I pay with cash. Now that gives me a 6% spread. Um, from the guy who's bidding against me online for 16% buyer's premium, and I only have to pay 10%. That's excellent. Bring cash. Cash is king, you guys. I mean, cash, cash usually gets you some sort of discount or bargaining chip or something. So, you know, pull out your budget, bring your cash, and, you know, obviously that's also a great tip with it to stay within your boundaries, too, is if you decide you've only got $1,000 to spend, don't bring your credit card. Bring that $1,000 and pay cash and say goodbye if it goes to $1,001 because you're out of money. Um, also, someone's asking, when you drop something off as a consigner, do they, you have to provide that list of items or do they list it and check it over for you? Every auction house is different. Okay. So when they check it in, you know, if you're familiar with the auction house, um, you can leave the stuff and you know the people who are there and you trust them. But as with anything, if, if you're going to give something to someone else and you own it until it's sold, you probably want to make a list of that, of what you're giving them, just to make sure that you, I mean, that's just standard business practice, right? Well, I mean, like when you take it there, do they expect an itemized list when you give it to them as what to sell or do they just kind of... Well, they'll write it down or you write it down. It depends on the auction house. Okay. But when you drop it off, you do it there before you leave and then they tear off a copy and hand it to you. So you know what you can sign and they know what you can sign. Okay. Any, any last great tips before we actually walk through your outline of your new course about auctions? Um, what are your biggest, you know, do's and don'ts? If you had to give us a short list of do's and don'ts, never do this, always do this. Oh, uh, that's, um, I don't know if that list would be valid here because er everything is contingent upon. Um, so if I could answer that a little bit differently, um, cause I, that, that list would be really long because I would have to say, do this, but only in this circumstance. And then this circumstance, is something right. be, so I've got a couple of examples here of some stuff that I've sourced at auctions. Can I show you that? Sure. Okay. And, and another thing is, um, let's not forget the people who are at these auctions. These people who are bidding against you can be really cool people that you can make alliances with. Uh, and, and one of that, I know you've heard my filter story. I went to an auction. There were eight filters in a box. It's just like a little Electrolux filter for vacuum cleaners, I think. And they were in a box, and I scanned them. I'm like, okay, I can make a little bit of money. Bought the box. Guy comes up to me, little little bitty Italian guy, like 70 years old, um, an ex-transmission mechanic, and he said, hey, those are mine. I'm the consigner on those. I have a storage unit full of cases of these. Would you like them? So, well, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I think I bought one case from him and sent it into Amazon. It sold in one week plus the eight, one week. It was like 96 in a week. And I went back to him and I said, look, if I buy the entire storage unit, how much you need for that? He goes, well, you know, I've got rent coming up in the storage unit. I don't want to pay it. They're just sitting there gathering dust. I don't know what to do with them. You need 400 bucks. And there were cases upon cases upon cases. My net is $11,000 from a $400 investment plus the first eight filters. Now this doesn't happen all the time, but my buddy Fabio, Fabian, Fabian, um, he, he goes to uh, Home Depot and he'll buy out closeouts and uh, liquidations, but they're not open box and they're not returns. So he's got these great relationships with these Home Depot managers. So he'll give me a call and he likes things like power tools, but he gets other stuff in these deals. So he'll call me 
and say, Barbara, I picked up a whole bunch of stuff from Home Depot. Do you want any solar lights? Yeah, for like five bucks a box. And I flip them locally for 20. So you this all started because I was at an auction. I bought something. I made a connection with a guy. And this kind of stuff happens regularly when you're at auctions. You just start to get to know people. And a guy who buys furniture, let's say he buys a truckload of furniture, and on it are cases of Looney Tunes, okay? I got bins and bins of these Looney Tune guys with the tags still on it from a store that had gone out of business, right? They don't want any of this stuff. They'll practically give it to you because they just want the furniture, right? Right. They're so, making their money on the stuff that yeah. they want. So that's just gravy. So if they get a hundred bucks for your 10 boxes or whatever, they're totally fine with it. Yeah. Make connections with people. Not everybody. Cause you're, you got to go to these live auctions so that you can meet, see some of these people and get a feel for whether they're, they're jerks. <laughs> some of them are, or if they're cool and that, you know, they're just hustlers like us and they have a certain thing that they do and stuff they sell. And then you could, you could form alliances. So I wanted to say that networking opportunities. Um, and then another thing is you can find products to source wholesale. So I had no idea, let's say Dickies, right? I had no idea painters overall. Didn't know anything about these, right? So I picked up a couple cases. They did re did well. So I went and found the manufacturer, for example. You can look at the tags on these items that you're picking up and find out where it's manufactured, who distributes it, and you contact them, and now you have a new wholesale source. So you get ideas for products that you never knew existed by going to auctions and don't just look at the, the new products, look at the used products and again, look, look at the manufacturer and go source those things wholesale if it's something that you can sell locally or something you can make money in whether it's local or not. Those are my last minute tips. Okay. And, and is there any sort of never do the following? Like, you know, I'm a total noob to auctions and what you said already scares me. I'm going to try it anyway, but like, I know they're going to see me coming a mile away. Like, Oh yeah, we can outbid her in five seconds. But is there any sort of um, yeah. etiquette or something that you just never do or, you know, newbie mistakes? Um, I'd say there's one do and one don't. The do, the don't is don't bid emotionally. So it's so easy to get caught up and to want to outbid that other guy and be like, I'm going to go one more bid or I really want that. I bet I could get more money for it than if you've done your research, you know how much you can get for that item. Don't get caught up emotionally. And it's hard sometimes, but you just kind of keep that in check. Look at it as a business. And the other do is know exactly what you can, where you can sell something and how much money you can make on it before you ever bid on it. So I, I had scanned the Dickies. I knew what they were worth. I knew what I could sell them for. I knew what I could make for them. And then keeping in mind the buyer's premium and the tax, if you don't have a tax ID, um, you have to kind of back out what your max bid is. Do not go over that. That's my do and don't. Okay. So know your numbers. Know exactly what you're going to profit on something, where you're going to resell it, what you can make for it. You know, it. That keeps you out of being emotional. And I would even add to that, bring a budget. You know, everybody has a budget. I don't care if you're a million dollar seller or a five dollar seller. Everybody has a budget. Bring a budget, bring it in cash. And then you know, number one, you might get that discount. And number two, you know, you can't spend a penny over your budget. So you can't get emotional. You can only bet what's in your pocket. Um, and I think that that would be a great tip for somebody to really start. Okay. So well, you one, just one more thing on that. Be okay to walk away. Just because you brought money with you doesn't mean you need to buy anything. If the numbers aren't right, have a good time, have a hot dog from the vendor outside, and then leave. Absolutely. But you do not need to spend any money there. There's always more stuff. AMS, always more stuff. Yes, there's always more stuff. And most of the time, we all have more money than we do. Um, you know, Our money's gonna run out before our bargains run out. There's always somewhere to source product. There's always something to buy. There's, you know, in two days, if your auction doesn't go well, go to a different one. Go to an online one or just look yeah. at Craigslist. You'll find product to sell. Oh, yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, great. Well, we wanted, we do want to walk through, Barbara has an amazing new course on auctions. And if this interests you guys at all, it surely interests me. I love looking at this kind of stuff and new ways to source products. And so we're going to walk through just a little bit of this outline and show you kind of what this auction arbitrage course, you know, looks like. And Barbara's going to talk through it briefly and um, we're going to have a excellent deal for you here at the end of the show.
Well, option arbitrage, I talk a lot about what we just talked about was really scratching the surface. There's so much more to learn. Um, there's, there's a lot of nuances on how to bid, how to win the bid, psychological tactics, and just the ins and outs of how to research product before you go, different sales channels you can push stuff into. Um, so I started this, uh, it, it's, it's delivered in video format for the most part, but I also provide an Excel file that you can plug in numbers from an auction. Let's say it's an online auction. You put in the numbers and it will calculate what your max bid is, period. And you stick with that number so it's written in front of you. That's on the Facebook group. Um, all of the videos are done, either live videos at a live auction or screenshot videos uh, or PowerPoint videos and I'll upload the PDF. Um, I just finished a module today where I found an auction today that closes on Wednesday for a golf uh, store that had gone out of business and all of their brand new in poly bags with tags, golf shirts and um, vests and jackets. There are 17,000, I'm sorry, yeah, 17,000 units, over 17,000 units of brand new golf shirts and jackets. Uh, the bid currently is up to $5,800, but think about it. If you could get that all for eight grand, you're paying 50 cents a unit. It doesn't matter where you sell them. It doesn't matter if you just turn around, rebundle those into smaller lots and throw those lots on Craigslist or eBay. Um, and I know that that's, that's a bigger deal, but there are smaller deals out there. There are little liquidation deals. There are one-off pieces that you can just flip and turn easy. And I teach you guys how to do that in this modular course. This is the outline of the course. Amy, if you go to the second page, um, first, you're going to learn how to get set up on auctions. I'm going to show you how to set up when you're online and you're trying to figure out how to do an online auction to get yourself set up and understand the buyer's premium and where to put your contact information, how to get set up as a reseller for these auctions, both online and uh, live auctions, how to understand your numbers with that spreadsheet and just a calculator and a piece of paper when you go to a live auction, understanding the types of auctions. There are other kinds of auctions, too. Stores going out of business, liquidation auctions, um, trailers full of stuff. Uh, just you can auction pallets, you can auction individual items. Online auction basics, how to preview, really how to look at an item to see whether or not it's new, test it out, check the packaging, um, if it's a collectible or furniture, what to look for to identify whether or not it's uh, it's real or a fake. Um, how to place a max bid online so that you're not outbid. There are some tricks you can use so that when you're bidding only online, there are a couple little things that you can do that will win that bid because the other bidders aren't doing it. I show you how to do that. One of those would be sniping at the last minute. You eBayers probably know about sniping, where you place a last minute bid. You can do that in an auction, right? When he's ready to say sold, you just throw your bid in there and then he hits sold and you get the, you get the bid. And also when not to bid, which we talked a little bit about here. Go ahead and go to the next page, please. So module two, and this is just an overview. Um, each module has multiple videos, multiple PDFs, and multiple Excel files. And then as I find auctions, I throw those auctions up onto the Facebook group. So I'll say, hey guys, in Kentucky today, in Lexington, there's this cool online auction um, or hybrid auction. Go check it out. Here's some items from the auction that I thought you might do well at. Um, so I'll, I don't know where everybody is located, but I'll make sure that I have kind of an across the country um, input on different auctions coming up so everybody gets a chance to kind of play around in auctions. Uh, how to choose a lot. How to evaluate your competition, both online and offline. You can get a feel for people's bidding patterns and use that to gain an advantage over them both online and auction, offline, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, knowing your sales channels and profitability before you bid on something. Have an idea of, uh, hey, I see Facebook groups who love French provincial furniture and there's a whole set there. Here's, here's what I know I can get for it on Facebook and Craigslist. So my max bid is X amount of dollars because here's how much money you want to make. That's your max bid. You already know that you're going to take pictures and put that on Craigslist and Facebook before you leave that auction house. Know what your sales channels are and what profit you want to make before you ever bid on anything. And again, I have an Excel spreadsheet that you can use for that. Go ahead and do the next slide. Then module three is terms to know. There is auction, live auction etiquette. And, you know, if you make an, if, if you make an enemy out of the auctioneer, he might miss your bids. Um, also, auctioneers do some things um, sometimes that are maybe not that ethical and you have to be aware that they're doing it or you'll pay more. 
and they do it to make you bid higher. Things like ghost bidding and bounce bidding, and I talk about what ghost and bounce bidding are on uh, module three. And then how to position yourself. And I don't mean from a marketing standpoint, I mean from a physical standpoint. So I once had this guy at this auction who's a good seven feet tall and big, and he would stand in front of me when it was an item that we were bidding against, he would position himself right in front of me. But I knew the auctioneer well enough to know that he was deaf in his right ear, but he could catch my bid on the left. So I would move to his left side and place a bid around this guy. So you know your auctioneer, you know your competition, and you know how to physically position yourself to get a bid. And also, you don't have to let everybody know that you're bidding. As long as the auctioneer knows that you're bidding, and sometimes if you've got a guy who's kind of out to get you because he, he's got an ego trip or whatever, you can just l get the auctioneer to learn what your tell is so it could just be a little head tilt. Some auctioneers, when I do this, they know that I'm bidding. Or if I just do this, just put my head down. They know I'm bidding. Um, that flummoxes the, your competition in the room because they don't know who's bidding against them, and it puts them a little bit off their game. Um, going live. I'm gonna do, I do videos from live auctions all the time. It's so much fun. I do a bunch of those, and I'll put them up. Um, everything from industrial auctions to where I got the Toys R Us sign and the live chicken and um, car auctions. and Every auction I go to, I usually take a little bit snippet of a video and kind of show you what I'm doing and what I found and why I would bid on an item. Go ahead to the next slide, please. Module four, what do you do after you win the bid? A lot of you are saying, oh man, you know, I live in an apartment. What the heck am I going to do? I got all this stuff. I wanted an auction. Uh, let's talk storage units, folks. Cheap, easy, fast. A lot of storage places will give you a storage or a, 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 a storage unit for a dollar for the first month. So leverage that. Um, you can go to Home Depot and for twenty bucks a month out where I live, I'm sorry, twenty dollars for ninety minutes, you can rent a Home Depot pickup truck. Um, budget, I can get a budget truck for a day for seven sixteen ninety nine, fifteen ninety nine, sixteen dollars plus gas. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that you can go pick up your stuff or have people pick up the stuff for you and house it and flip it fast. Um, how to sell channels, use mute. Okay, so I'm going to talk a lot about using different sales channels. Uh, I've got a Facebook group with about 1,300 people on it now called Barbara's Funky Treasure that I uh, used to sell furniture on. Now I just anything I get, it goes up there. And if you create your own Facebook page and you create your own following of a certain type of product you sell, you'll have local people already um, lined up. When, you're, when you buy something at an auction, you put it up there, they have dibs on it. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Relationship building, again, meeting other bidders, people who are the regulars, who know this business, who have other deals they run across. You want to make relationship with those. And then meeting consigners, like I did with, um, with this filter. You never know what a consigner is going to have. When you go to drop stuff off or pick stuff up from an auction and you see someone else dropping stuff off, have a conversation with them. They could be a business going out, uh, liquidating their excess stock, and they have a ton more in their warehouse. All you have to do is talk to them and make that connection. You open up doors to other possibilities. Go to the next slide, please. So for, for uh, advanced psychological tactics, I love this stuff. And I talked a little bit about these. Um, using human nature to your bidding advantage, um, shock and awe bidding, which uh, a lot of times at auctions is pretty silent and people don't yell out. But especially with the, this auctioneer's deaf in one ear, I'll yell my bid. Because um, it, it breaks him away from his focus on anybody else's bidding because he's looking to see who yelled the bid. Um, there are all sorts of stealth bidding I talked about a little bit where you can just do a head nod. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do um, to win the bid. Playing nice, if you really want an item and somebody else is on it and you know he's a good, good guy or good gal, you just say, hey, look, I really want that. Do you mind? And they won't bid against you. Um, but then later on when they want an item, you let them have it too. So there's playing nice. There's all sorts of stuff that you can. In the end, there's no friends at auctions. So if there's a pallet of stuff or there's a box of stuff that you know you can make money on and you know what your numbers are, then go for it. Okay, next slide. So I've got a bonus ebook where I, I kind of break it down, just secrets to auction sourcing. I talk about how to find auctions and I, will li I list in there um, I think about 10 different online auction sites. And each of these auction sites hold multiple auctions throughout the entire country every single day. And I give you that list in that ebook. Go ahead to the next slide, please. 
I also give you the Auction Arbitrage Facebook group. Now this is a private group and this is where I put all of the information, all the videos, all the PDFs, all the transcriptions, the Excel files, everything goes into this Facebook group and you get access to that um, when you invest in the, the Auction Arbitrage course that I put together. Um, and go ahead to the next stage. And I've, uh, Kristen always uh, asks if I'll give her group. Uh, actually, I love the way she closed. She says, you have to give my group a discount, and which I, I absolutely love to do because the mommy income folks are just so supportive and, and wonderful. And um, so uh, I'm giving you guys a $20 discount off of the $97 regular course price. You get 20 bucks off, so it makes it $77. Uh, just use when you check out, use the code, code mommy. Um, and that'll take you to a Gumroad page. And if you're not familiar with Gumroad and you don't have a Gumroad account, it'll just ask for your email address and let you pay online. And when you get to the checkout page, it'll say promo code, and you just type in mommy, and that'll give you the $20 off. And then as soon as I get um, your confirmation that, uh, that you've registered, I will send you an invitation to the Facebook page, and the modules are in there, and I keep adding new content. So it's not just, you know, um, one and done. I keep adding new videos and new auction stuff and new links in there. So go, just go to tinyurl.com slash mommy auction, mommy auction, and type in mommy at checkout, and you get a $20 discount, 77 bucks, and you get all that offering our folks a discount there and I know that um, you know there's so many other things and so a lot of different things to invest in but I can tell you with some of the looming Amazon issues I know a lot of our folks here are Amazon um, with some of the looming disappointments of Amazon and things like restricted brands and things like that this is a good opportunity to learn auctions number one I'm gonna say it again local is key the reason why Barbara is doing so well is because she is dominating in her area in her niche and she's going all over the place and selling on Craigslist and Facebook groups and 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 Amazon and eBay and wherever else that she can make a profit she's not you know just narrowing herself into I can only sell one different place so you know just this is a way to capitalize on your local area. Learn your local auction houses, source for all kinds of different platforms. And I think you'd be really surprised at the money that you can make. I've learned a ton from Barbara just by looking and previewing this course that she has. I believe it's just fantastic. And she has more experience than anybody I've ever met at auctions. She knows the ins and outs of it. And you know, you can trust her experience. And if you have questions, you can access Barbara through the Facebook group. She's happy to help you personally if you're struggling with one point or another in auctions. Yeah. Absolutely. And in fact, I was, um, I'm going to interview an auctioneer to find out their perspective as to why they take one bid over another. And I'm being interviewed on an auction radio show. An auctioneer last week asked me if, uh, if I would talk about my perspective of, from, from a professional bidder's perspective. You know, how do you source things and, um, and how do I um, successfully buy at auctions, which is kind of cool. So I'll share all that information on the Facebook group. Okay, right now and below this video, if you're, if you're catching the replay and you're, you're below this video will be the links and everything that you need to be able to see and get your discount and to go to the Gumroad page and get your auction sourcing strategies. I really think that this is good for people. And no matter what platform you're selling on, you'll be able to make money at auctions. This is the exact how-to. I think people are stopped by fear because they just don't know what to do. I mean, I'm one of those people, so I'm glad that you have filled us in on this and you're really helping us to understand another way to source product. Last but not least, we do have to, um, we do have a private Facebook group here on Mommy Income. So if you are new to our show and you've never joined our Facebook group, it is free, but it's private. So you got to jump through a couple hoops to join us. Uh, we don't like spammers and we like positive, encouraging, helpful people that want to help each other build their businesses. And that's what we're about at Mommy Income. And we'd love to have you as part of our Facebook group. And you need a code word because that's how we roll and it's auction of course so <laughs> come to uh, mommyincome.com slash join us and you can join the mommy income Facebook group again it's private it's free but we'd love to have you and if you go to mommyincome.com join us and you put in your code word auction you're going to get into our Facebook group where we would love to encourage you to um, grow your business in whatever way that makes sense for you. So again, thank you, Barbara, so much for being here. The deal diva herself is off to some more auctions and you guys check out that course. This is something that interests you. We'd love to have you be a part of that and see what you think. So again, thank you, Barbara, so much. And again, thank you for having me. this has been Kristen and Amy in the background and Barbara, and we'll see you next week on Mommy Income Live. Bye.